Um, things that are, are planned for today include things, uh, US, specifically I want to do a flight around San Francisco, which I'm really excited about because it's gorgeous and it's somewhere I've been so I can actually talk about it. Um, a lot of people, I mean, we get tons, there's lots of you guys from the various Scandinavian regions. We got lots of various requests from things over there. Um, I am going to do a flight in Norway and check out some fjords, pining for the fjords, really. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll see, we'll see where we are, we'll see where the time is. Flight above Chernobyl sometime. Oh, that's really neat. We'll have to put that in the hopper, but that's a really interesting idea. That was a really interesting idea. Um, well, we might take requests. Right now, we got we got plans for the first couple. Um, probably the chat might be a little hard to get a total amount of requests. Yeah, we do have to see Petra at some point. We're going to see what we can do. Let's get our first flight loaded up here, and uh, we'll just get things uh, started. So we are going to go... Um, where are my dots? Oh, I probably have my filter set, don't I? There we go. Let's go see what's going on. Because uh, we were looking for the aminals. And uh, so we, we turned the uh, map filters. We, we turned off everything except the aminals to find it. So, San Francisco International. So, okay, okay, I am running on the premium build of this game, supplied by Microsoft. So, the difference is that there are a few more sort of handcrafted areas in the premium build. Um, which is one of those things where it's not a huge deal. Because, first of all, 99% of the world... It just cannot be handcrafted and isn't handcrafted. All the places with little stars, these are places with extra handcrafted uh, custom scenery. So the uh, the base version comes with 20, uh, the deluxe 25, and the premium is 30 um, in there. And you can get the list of airports if you just check the product page or Wikipedia, whatever. You can get all those things. So is Boise handcrafted? I don't know. There. So yeah, over here, we've got Denver right. International. We've got Aspen, Pitkin Co., Sardi Field. Some of these handcrafted things are... Ooh, really really tiny things as well um telluride now that's a I've, i don't know if i've ever flown out there but i know it's one of these gorgeous gorgeous areas this is one of those like super high elevation like ten thousand feet kind of airports telluride i think so right something like that we have here sedona lower loon creek oh that sounds like a fancy uh, area we've got seattle tacoma international we've got uh san francisco international Los Angeles International, uh, Toronto, which I did in include in a video once. We've got uh, Kennedy International and the area. It's not the star doesn't necessarily represent just the airport yet in some loving, but some of the surrounding area and having some custom stuff there. We've got Orlando. We've got wow. Oh, we're gonna have to do this flight at some point. That's cool. Two little areas. I'm sure they designed it like for this sort of island hop and flight. That was the idea. This is like this is one kind of setup i think that they've just you know spread across the two islands which is kick ass cool uh the contin is that as i say no that's not where where is this what country would this be i don't know uh serena station over here uh mariscal sucre uh Shagua. so you can see like all over the world there's a, a bit of content go away fly god this fly has been down here and i haven't been able to catch it for like a week the whole thing that like flies only live 24 hours is horseshit which incidentally is something that flies like a lot god it's driving me crazy so i mean there's ton oh i haven't done it yet but i definitely want to do a flight out here out of entembe because this is on the shore of lake victoria which sounds like a really 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 fun um place to go and so i mean and it just just keeps going lots of stuff all over but yes we're gonna start i want to start in san francisco here because, again, I've been there, I can talk about it, it's gorgeously pretty, and we can fly under the Golden Gate Bridge. So we're going to set this as a departure. Now, I want to do these sort of sightseeing flights, certainly with just sort of a simple prop plane, right? Because we're going to fly sort of low and slow. I mean, we're not we're not going to do it in the airliner, although we can take a look at the Dreamliner at some point, which is included in the premium pack of this. Um, I really like the DA-62, although it still may be a little bit fast for what we're, we're doing here. Do we just want to do the Cessna? We could do the icon. I like the flexibility of it because you can land in the water. Um, you're probably in uh, Costa Rica. Oh, maybe. There's this red one. So a few people are calling for this. I haven't flown this plane yet. I guess there's no time like the present. So we're going to get it loading and then we're going to check the whiskey and chocolate fun and some resubs as well. So we got San Francisco. Um, it should be, there we go, live time live weather Ooh, it's gonna be foggy we might uh we might have to go and override the weather in san francisco because 
Carl may have rolled in. We may not actually be able to see anything. So we may have to override the live weather. Uh, so we are going to see. But theoretically, live time, live weather is going to be in place. So let's get this loading. And let's take a look at the uh, whiskey and chocolate fun. So first we have Kiwi Cat coming in. Thank you very much, Kiwi. Are you are you from are you from the NZ NZ? Because we have to do New Zealand at some point for sure. Thanks for all the coverage of the release of the Sim. It's been great to see your enthusiasm in the flight sim community. Don't be a stranger once the release hype dies down. Well, I mean, I do regularly fly flight sim stuff on my own. I don't always record it and stuff like that. But I'm always I'm always looking at the subreddit and everything. So you can definitely expect uh, my presence to continue at the very least. And chaos, oh man, chaos. I just like using credit cards. I'm using cash. Also, can I ask you to fly over Aarhus from Aarhus Airport? Is 29 kilometers away from Aarhus. Well, we are gonna do more flights in various Scandinavian countries because I know there's a lot of you guys here, and of course, cool man who's always around. We're going to have to finally get take a look at Aarhus. Might not be today. We'll see how it goes, but we'll see. St. Helena is one of the most remote islands and has an airport. Wendover production did a cool video on it. Might be cool to check out in a flight sim. Cool, cool, cool. And take off from my hometown, Hamilton, to fly over Mount Doom. Oh, in, in New Zealand? <laughs> eh. Should fly, uh, do a fly of Lord of the Rings King's Tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord of the Rings tour, that would be excellent. The full mission, uh, full version include a lot of missions. As far as I can tell, the standard edition and the premium edition have the same suite of missions to start off with. Um, they both, so it all includes, there's a bunch of landing challenges. Um, there's a, definitely over a dozen. There might be two dozen landing challenges. It might be more than that, I don't know. Um, so they set you up like near an airport to try to land and actually score it based on smoothness and accuracy and things like that. In addition to that, there's the bush flying challenges. Um, there are three currently in the game. Um, they're all like multi-hour affair, like multi-step, multi-hour affairs. I actually just posted a video of me doing a run in the um, in the pre-release build, not the one here. This is the release version of the game, but I just posted a little bit of it on the UpTubs, and you can see that it's actually really interesting. Stream audio is a bit on the quiet side. Which part of it? Voice or or what? I mean, I do have the game volume set fairly low so that we don't get overwhelmed by the engine noises. All of it, the voice. Okay, well, my microphone is a little further away. So that... There we go. And we'll try something like this. Yeah. It was it was a little far out of the way. I realized um, it was left over from my setup from uh, from yesterday when uh, we were just hanging out, and it was sort of out of the way there. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, I was like, I saw the plane, I'm like, what is this thing? Oh yes, we picked this plane. Now I remember. Hey Kane, thanks for the subs. One of the best for boring evenings. Thanks, Lori Moon. Alright, I mean the color on this thing is fantastic. Now I have not I've not flown this at all. So Wait, am I moving? Does this oh, This plane doesn't have parking brakes. Okay! Let's keep the tow brakes engaged then. Oh, it doesn't help that my throttle was all the way up. Okay, we're probably fine now. So, yeah, this is um, this is a plane. What is? Oh, this is my fuel. Oh my gosh. Just like an exposed tube to show the fuel levels. What? Smoke system. I was gonna say. Oh, I'm stuck on start. Let's not do that. There you go. Just on both, please. That's gonna be okay. Um, smoke system. So I think this is like sort of supposed to be a little bit of a, of a like acrobatic sort of show plane, you know, with a smoke system. I mean, maybe it's meant to be a crop duster, but I think it might be sort of an acrobatics kind of show plane going on. Arm refill smoke system. I don't think the, the smoke system is actually enabled. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if we can leave a trail of smoke behind. No smoking. What? But smoke trails. This looks like a knob that does something, but it's not actually enabled. We've got more markers for something over here. Are there multiple fuel tanks being shown? Oh, do we got... We've got prop control on this. Oh, we do. Interesting. So it's got variable prop pitch in this plane. Cowl flaps. That makes me think of playing um, uh, IL Strumerick or whatever. That's where I'm used to interacting with cowl flaps. Oops, what did I just do here? Oh, it's the fuel tanks. Main, 
or main versus auxiliary okay i mean that's all set up right now assuming i didn't actually i was gonna say i think i just killed the engine by uh flipping that over let's start it up there we go good stuff all right we got power we got fuel flow um mix oh see we're, we are moving again hang on a sec yeah, there's no parking brake, so when the prop is moving, we are definitely going. Um, do we not have the ability to control our mix on this plane? Because I would have thought... Yeah, I'm not sure that we do. Interesting. All right. We about ready to go? Lord, running on a few... Well, I think we're going to be fine for this. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my co-pilot... Okay, I've got my co-pilot set to manage my comms for me. Because we're not really going to interact with the uh, radio in this way. They're not just going to keep repeating like, mm, Please acknowledge you heard my last instruction kind of thing. Let's take a quick look outside of the plane. Alright, the weather's not too bad, actually. It's cloudy. But it's doable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off here. And we're going to go and turn north. And we're just going to go along the coast over here until we get into the city proper. And we're going to find out what it's like to maneuver with this plane, because I have no idea. Also, it's a tail dragger, which I have learned is uh, is quite a challenge to land in a smooth fashion. So we'll see what we can do. Is there a hole in the floor? There is a hole in the floor! So you can push the plane around, like, uh, Flintstone style? Now, I assume it probably has to do with, like, various maneuvers and things like that, so you can actually check and spot what's directly below you and things. That's to drop grenades out of... <laughs> Don't drop your wallet or your phone? It's like, damn it, I just bought a new one! Every time that seems to happen. All right, since we're doing cinematic flight, and since it's not a plane where we're really interacting with the cockpit in any way... <gasps> Look, a plane just took off over there. What we're going to do is we are going to do the flying from primarily outside the plane over here for fuel, full visual beautifulness, and that's going to be okay. Uh, trip, we don't have flaps on this plane either. Because you would have a little flaps display right over here. Integrated toilet. There you go for those long flights. All right, well, I guess there's nothing to do but to go ahead and take off, huh? I got it shoe myself here all right throttle up i don't know what the specs on this are i don't know what our takeoff speed are is although i suspect it's going to be not too much the green windows i haven't done anything it, it just took off on its own as soon basically as soon as we passed 40 knots oh my god and it really it really wants to climb I assume that I do have a trim. Okay, I do have a trim. Holy cow! Ah! Amazing, such a low-tech plane has autopilot. Oh, yeah, because it took off on its own? Yeah. I mean, it's going to have a lot of lift with two wings, which is really interesting. Are those actual knots? Okay, this plane is really speedy. And I'm betting it can handle some pretty, um... So, some, some pretty good, uh... Like, acrobatic maneuvers here. Although maybe we'll get a little elevation. Or as I seem to always say it, Evelation. There's San Francisco International. I'm trying to think. Have I... <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. This... Oh, it wants to flip over here. Hold on. There we go. Let's get back in here. Oh, my God. This plane is, like, always on the edge of just wanting to... Yep, yep, okay. Yeah, that, that's this kind of plane. Yeah, try spinning, that's a good trick. Um, this is definitely a plane that's meant for a particular type of flying. So that'll that'll be interesting and fun for this. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Trying to trim it to be solid. Okay, so I was going to say, I don't know... No, no, I've definitely flown into um, to, to, to San Francisco Airport. Uh, before. Yeah, because I've been, I've been to San Francisco a lot, and I was just trying to remember if I'd landed somewhere else and then had to take a big trip. The first three times I went to San Francisco, I didn't really go. It was flying out for some 2K stuff for um, for Civ and Civ Beyond Earth and XCOM and various things like that, um, and 2K flew me out. So I landed, yeah, in San Francisco, got into a, a car, car service, and they drove through the city at like 5 o'clock in the morning, so I didn't see anything, 
over the Golden Gate Bridge, again, couldn't really see anything, and then way off into the mountains over here to a town called Nevada, which is where 2K actually is. So it wasn't until like my fourth trip to San Francisco where I actually got to see the city. And that was that um, Audi Forza uh, 24 Hours Le Mans of, er, of Le Mans event that uh, happened a little while ago. Let me move us just a little over that way. Um, and uh, I actually stayed for an extra week afterwards because Essentia came with me. And we actually finally did the uh, the tourist thing and I finally got to see the city. And it's wonderful. And I've gone back for work a couple of times since then and got to spend a little bit more time in the city um, at that plane as well. That plane is cute as a button which I've heard is the best criteria for picking a vehicle. I agree. My God, the speed. Like, we're doing uh, over 140 knots here, just sort of casually. I'm betting... Now, this is way too low in the ground to try something like a loop-de-loop. -loop. Way too low to the ground for something like that. But I'm willing to bet this plane... All right, well, not like that. I'm willing to bet it can do it very well, but... It went straight into stall speed, like, immediately. I probably just didn't build enough uh, speed, but we're uh, we're not going to do that quite this low to the ground. Also, it's being very laggy. I wonder because I'm streaming? Oh, yeah. OBS is actually having a hard time keeping up here doing this live stream. I did change OBS to, uh, to do 60 frames per second on my recordings now, and I think it's hammering my CPU maybe a little harder than we would like. Yeah, there's some frame dropping. If it keeps being a problem, what might happen... Okay, I want to I want to go down a little bit, so let me throttle down a scooch. If it keeps being a problem, what I might do is stop the stream, change OBS to 30 frames a second, and then restart it, just so it doesn't have to work quite as hard to encode. It was working fine on the yub tubs, but it might be a little bit of a problem over here. Lightsome might be downloading um, scenery, but it, it's not... It's not. I'm not actually dropping frames in terms of lag. There's no... Yeah, there's no... Um, there's no internet bottleneck happening over here. And I've flown over this area before, so it should still already be in my rolling cache. Although we did do a lot of flying with Essentia, but I've set up like a 100 gig rolling cache. So I don't think we've actually run out of anything along the way. I think it's just my computer that's just having a bit of a hard time. I could maybe stream at a lower res, that's true, but usually I like to stream at full 1080p because with strategy games and stuff, there's a lot of reading to do, but frame rates don't usually matter so much. So this bridge, what is this bridge called? This is the bridge that connects San Francisco over to, I think, Oakland. And this is Treasure Island. Oh, I'm pointing at the screen, you guys. I'm being super helpful. This is Treasure Island over here, which I don't, I think it used to be a military base. I don't know if it's active anymore. It is, it's just the Bay Bridge. Okay. Bay Bridge. Just casually violating like a million laws. There's some schmutz in the ground. Oh! Is it just me, or did it sort of teleport me down? I think there was a little bit of a funky terrain thing that it didn't know how to deal with this. So it looks like it's putting a road down there, and it feels like it just dropped me, like, 50 feet to the water level there, didn't it? Maybe? There was a hitbox there, I think. Maybe. Maybe. Um, hold on a sec. I need to check. I want to make sure that under assistance, I want all the, um... The navigation aids. Okay, good. They're all on, which I want, except I don't want automatic smart mode. That's going to be okay. So what's going to happen here? Oh, no. I turn this off. Uh, no, leave taxi ribbon. Not that I think it's going to matter. Turn off the landing pad. I'm going to leave all the markers for points of interest, cities, airports, fauna markers, and things like that. So that it'll be, this is, these are the great, like, sightseeing tools over here to make sure you don't miss something cool to look at. I think because of our stuff. Yeah, I've disabled currently, um... The crash damage, the stress. I mean, we can turn crashing back on, I suppose. Although, if that was a clipping into a hitbox thing, maybe that would have crashed us when we went under the bridge. So maybe I will leave it off after all. Um, just for these sightseeing flights over here. I think we might do something like that. You get crazy aerodynamics going under the bridge anyway. I mean, it might have been something weird like that. I'm not sure. But yeah, is there anyone in chat that's from this area or knows about this area? Yeah, so I've been here because on weekends they have a big sort of uh, flea market boot sale kind of kind of affair, um, and it was it was actually a great way to spend the day. All the you know lots of fair food, everything deep fried and wonderful, and I think a bunch of it was like I think a military base. But it, we took a walk around. It felt like a freaking deserted ghost town. It was really weird. It was really kind of spooky because we walked like I don't know Essentia like maybe nearly an hour and it was just like dead 
outside of the flea market area. And then trying to convince an Uber to come pick us up is actually a little bit of a challenge as well, which is a whole other thing. So what we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna finish our flight sort of out on, over the water here, and then we'll fly over the city. So this little hunk of rock um, here is Alcatraz. So let's get our rope dangling behind the plane because we've got a couple of people to pick up. Some guy named Cian Connery. I don't know. He wants, he wants a bit of a pickup here. We're gonna take a look. Wow, this plane is so, it's hyper responsive. It's hyper responsive, which I suppose is, is the point with this particular type of thing, but woof. This is Alcatraz right over here. This is the rock. I'm gonna try to slow down a bit without, you know, actually crashing because I don't want to become a permanent resident. Now, I did not actually go visit this at any point uh, when I was in the SF. Watching my speed as we do a slow sort of pass. Try to avoid the water tower. That's pretty low. I can see my shadow. We, we're awfully close there. All right. Throttle up. Let's try to avoid going into the drink. Yeah, Alcatraz looks really great. Now, this is an area that's got some custom scenery, so um, it's not just reliant on what the AI did to the scenery itself. We'll take a look, and uh, over there, we got the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, why is it called the Golden Gate Bridge? Because it's clearly painted red. Why is Golden or Golden Gate? What's, what's the deal? Max speed, max power. Yeah, the water does look good. Um, it's less choppy than it was. When you guys saw, I did that flight, um, in the, the Icon A5, we did sort of lock hopping, um, the Scottish Highlands video. The water there was, like, oh, exaggerated choppy and things. I think they've gone and really brought that, even in later iterations of my, my preview build, things have gotten a lot more relaxed. We'll see how this one goes. California's the Golden State. Oh. Oh. Okay, we can see there's a bit of a road in the water here, so I'm wondering if it's going to sort of drop me again right to the water level. Because I'm clearly not right on the water. No, they were fine. Although I did see some um, some sort of turbulence hit us when we went under there. And one of the things in this game, it does have really crazy aerodynamics and airflow simulations with terrain. Got some ships chilling out. That, some sort of tanker over there. I think I'm descending a little. Sometimes I spend too much time looking at the beautiful surroundings rather than flying the plane. No ray tracing. So, what they've done for this game, they've actually gone and tried to implement um, a rendering model and shaders and things like this that are basically as close to ray tracing as possible and certainly use physically based materials and things like this, but don't actually require a ray tracing enabled video card. Um, now, I don't know what would happen if you actually had an RTX card. I don't have an RTX card. Uh, I have the 1080, so the GTX 1080, not the TI. The 1080, so a good video card, but not a stupid video card. But, I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll need to do an upgrade at some point. I'm not sure. So, I've gone to right over here, basically. I've not actually, like, as a touristy thing, I have not actually crossed the bridge. It's very popular, like, uh, rent a bike. Bike across the bridge. And uh, you maybe even make it to Sausalito or something over there. Have lunch, then come back. It sounds really wonderful. This is a park called the, I think, is it the Presidio? Something like that. Um, and on weekends, they have a lot of, like, food trucks and stuff all set up over here on there. Really nice, really lovely place to visit. Oh, my God. Why is it so choppy again? Okay, streaming in this does not agree. Let me uh, hit pause for a second because there's a few more things I want to talk about over here. Lovely, lovely place to visit. Uh, would highly recommend. But also, right over one of these buildings over here is a big, like, LucasArts um, building where they've got, like, cool, you know, figures of, like, life-size Yodas and Vaders and things like that. Uh, when we went, it wasn't open. We, were, we only looked through the glass. Uh, but it was really cool to look at. Somewhere right over here. Big LucasArts, LucasFilms kind of thing. I guess LucasFilms more than arts. And yes, this is the Palace of Fine Arts. Unbelievable. Let's see if we can get a bit of a flyby here. Part of me wonders if I should have taken a plane I was a little bit more comfortable with uh, and experienced with. But you know what? There's no better way to learn. So let's come around here and see if we can get a close-up of the Palace of the Fine Arts. That's sort of a, like, Greeky kind of thing going on, you know? 
like an old like Odeon or, or something. Lots of pillars and walls. Really, really gorgeous to visit. Like, make sure you got lots of room for pictures. Which is actually kind of true about all of San Francisco, even within the city proper itself. Now, we're going to move towards the city a little bit, but before we do, right over here on the water, um, it's going to be one of these. I think it's this one, not the long one that's sticking out over here by the cruise ship, but just after it, I believe is the famous... Per is it Pier 46, 45, 39? What is it? The, po the, the, the really famous pier. There's actually more than one in San Francisco, uh, but one of them is really, I was going to say 69. Yeah, I think it's 39 is is the one. But okay, so all this waterfront here has tons of sort of like touristy kind of stuff, which is always going to be hit and miss, right? Some of it is really tacky, cheesy, souvenir -y, touristy stuff, but some of it is, is kind of interesting. And the pier itself, which is right over here, again, I'm going to ask my co-pilot, not that there's room for a co-pilot over here, but my co-pilot, Mr. Button, Mr. Pause Button, to uh, hang on to the controls for me for a second. I like how, like, the plane still loops around. It'll also, you'll see the speed change. Um, so this is, like, I, I think this is just probably slight glitch that they'll probably fix. Um, the Your displays and things like that during when you're doing this active pause, which is what this is, because the rest of the world is still operating. Cars are still moving. Other planes, if there's any in the sky, will continue to operate. It's just your plane that's frozen, but some of the, the physics and UI still gets updated bizarrely on some planes more than others so be careful when you use the active pause button because every now and again you'll be like slightly caught out but this here is the pier um and yeah it's pretty touristy right you'll get your your bubba gump shrimp company and different things like that but some of it is i mean it's legitimately really gorgeous to see a big gazebo carousel thing over here there'll be people doing magic acts and things um and while it's a little pricey the, some of the food here is legitimately good in fact if a kiss for luck is in the chat she'll tell you that the best um chowder she's ever had is from one of the places either i don't know if it was on the pier or sort of on the uh, the street front over here or something like that um and sometimes that's the case you know sometimes places are popular because they're legitimately good it does happen uh we'll, we'll see so let's uh unpause all right we're still good excellent so now we're gonna veer a little bit more into the city we're still gonna stay a little on the outskirts but we're gonna Buzz. Is it Voigt or Hoyt, this tower that I'm going by? I don't remember. But right up here on this hilltop, you see this tower, this spire? Not not the transmit the uh, pyramid in the background, the household of the Illuminati, but this place right over here. Now, I'm trying to remember what the deal with it is. I feel like someone died and left some money specifically to do this. I don't know if it was like, like a guy who died and his widow did this or, or something, but it's this observational tower. You can go to it. Well, let's try not to die. You can go up to it. You can go up to the top and get great views of the entire city. And even not at the top. These this sort of like plaza and things like this. And these cliffs, like, it really is like sort of sharp cliffs and things very similar to this. And you can get some great views of the entire city. Someone in chat. Hoyt! So I'm like, I can't get the first letter. It's something oit. So yeah, this thing here. It's Transmit, right? It's an insurance company. But it sure as hell looks like an Illuminati headquarters. I'm just saying. Very pop. Any any show, movie ever set in San Francisco, they're going to make sure they get that tower in the background to remind you of where you are. Now, we're going to do another pass over the city in a sec. But first, I'm going to come over somewhere over here, a little further, I guess, to... I keep calling it the Mercado, but it's not that. The, the Embarcado? What is it? Also, this stadium. What stadium is this? I didn't already miss it, did I? No. It ought to be coming somewhere over here. Embarcado. It is over this way. I mean, it's on the coast. I feel like this. I'm not in the right place anymore. So call it Paco. Too far south now. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Well, we'll, we'll do another pass around. Whee! All right, this plane, I can see the appeal. Is it after the Bay Bridge? Is it between the Bay Bridge and uh, Pier 39? Can't wait for VR support. Yeah, so they did announce they are working on VR support for the game. Um, not right at release, but sometime in the fall. Now, originally, it's only going to be one or two VR devices, but they're going to add more. 
Yeah, the uh, the stadium looks fantastic. Is it really like that right by the water? Which is interesting because there's no seating on that one side. So they've like nerfed the amount of seating they can provide. Oh, there it is. Right over here. They've nerfed the amount of seating they can provide uh, for maybe a better view. This right over here. Great spot. So first of all. Thank you, Mr. Button. Um, this area of town is really lovely. I mean, yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of big, like, skyscraper -y type stuff, but there's actually a lot of really interesting stuff here. Lots of green spaces. Over here, you're going to see, you know, there's going to be lots of buskers and people hanging out in this park. It's just really lovely. And this building, which is quite large, we're, we're, we're pretty high up here, um, has got, it is this one, right, that I'm thinking of? Um, it is quite large, and there's, like, lots of great little shopping and things you can do in there. Great little ice cream parlor. All right. Now... We go through the town and make our way over to Golden Gate Park, which is not actually that close to Golden Gate Bridge. This diagonal road, this is what, uh, Columbus, Columbia. Columbus? Diagonal road that cuts through there. And it's a great walk. Like, walking up and down, you're going to go through, like, four different types of neighborhoods with distinctly different characters. The Italian section, the Chinese section of town. Um... Some of the really, like, hippy-dippy beatnik places. Uh, what is that? Because uh, um, City Lights um, Bookstore is on there, right? And then right across the street from that is... What is what is that bar ca called? Where all the beatnik poets and things hung out. Really lovely place. Oh, yeah! Lombard Street! Thank you for the reminder. Um, right over here. Oh! Oh, we were going to forget a very important stop. Vesuvio's! That's what it is. And that entire neighborhood is great. There's a lovely cafe, sort of, um, kind of kitty corner from Vesuvio's that's been there forever. Great little espressos and stuff. Here's one of the things. If, if uh, you know, when you travel with Essentia, one of the things that happens is you just go to all the amazing cafes. She's she's a big, like, coffee head, um, and especially, like, any place with some interesting culture and things. I think Lombard Street is over here. Oh, this is so laggy with the streaming. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, yep. Buzz. Okay. So in real life, at the top of this hill, there would be a massive number of cars lined up on these various streets ready to come down here. Actually, let's pop inside the plane. Right over there. And you get this wiggly road. Now, this road is a one way that only goes downhill, right? Like, they've got a vehicle going uphill over here, but I think it's one way only going down? I'm not sure. But this wibbly-wobbly road down a very steep hill. It's gorgeous. Everyone takes pictures of this. This is the other thing. If, like, a show is set in San Francisco, at some point, there will be a shot that includes Lombard Street over here. Yeah, one way downhill. That's right. Um, and is this is this Russian hill? This whole area? I say, these hills. And again, it's hard to get that, that sense of perspective here. I wonder if you can open the cockpit. Wouldn't it be nice to get this glass out of the way? Because we're getting some glare. I mean, on the one side because of the uh, the sunshine is what's going on here. Um, I could just... I could lower my graphic settings to disable um, glare and reflection. I could make... I could worsen the graphic settings to get a better shot over here. But um, all these hills, very steep. Climbing up this thing, it's amazing. You'll find... Uh, if you Google pictures of, like, cars parked on San Francisco Hills or something like that, like, it's a 45-degree slope. All the cars are, like, really, really slanty. You better have a really good uh, uh, handbrake, parking brake on your car, or you're going to have a bad, bad, bad time. There you go. Lombard Street over there. Oh, I'm so happy that we didn't forget that. All right. Buzz. Throttle up. <laughs> Try not to die. Okay, all good. Where's the house from Full House? Okay, so there actually is a, like, row of houses... That, again, gets used in every shot and things. I don't know if that's the Full House house. I don't know where they are. They've got a name. Are they, it's like the Painted Houses or something like that. We I saw them in real life. I have no idea where we'd find them here. And I don't know if it would actually be represented. The Painted Ladies. The Sisters. Mm -hmm. So, surprisingly far from all the action is Golden Gate Park which we can see as the strip of green over here. Unless I'm wrong, and I'm never wrong. But let's come at it from... from the... Uh, the west. Or, sorry. 
From some direction, anyway. Because we're facing south right now. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, we can see the city at night. Yes, actually, that's a great reminder. We'll change the uh, we'll change the time of day in a second. Now, one of these streets, and I feel like I feel like it might be this one or this one because it's sort of on one edge of the park. One of these is Hate H A I G H T Hajita Street, um, and another one that goes this way is Ashbury. So Hate Ashbury is a very very well known neighborhood. Oh, there's a we've got a, a church or a cathedral over here too. Um, you know, again, very, very hippy-dippy, beatnik moment, beatnik place. Uh, go there if you want to be offered marijuana, even well before it was legal. Well before it was legal. Walk down the street. There's a guy in front of the McDonald's there who's just going to have a big jar of, 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 of green stuff uh, on offer for you. San Francisco, man. Amazing. I mean, you know, it's hippie central. What are you, what are you going to do, right? So, yeah, it's one of these over here, and it, it just it, and it goes right up to Golden Gate Park. Right over here. Oh, you know, I think it's this street right there. That seems about right. And this is like the, the hippie hill for like the summer of love over here. Um, lots of tennis courts if you like to play tennis. Now, one of these places, is it over here? The, the aquarium? No, this building here, I think, is the aquarium. This building, if I'm right, and it is the aquarium, whichever one it is. Um, first of all, Super kick-ass, and you should visit it. Secondly, this is where I went for the Surviving Mars pre-release preview event uh, in there. Like, they have, you know, some, some back rooms and offices and stuff like that. It was there uh, for Surviving Mars, and that's where I met Scott Manley. And I met him while wearing my Air United shirt, and he saw it, and he was like, What the fuck? Because it turns out he's from a tiny town right next to Air. And he's like, How on earth... Am I in San Francisco, and there's someone here, he's from Truton, someone here wearing an Air United football club shirt. And so we bonded over that, which I thought was lovely. Really, really, really nice. So I haven't gone through this whole park, because it turns out it's pretty damn big. It just keeps going on and on and on. There's sort of a, a traditional sort of um, um, Japanese garden in here. There's apparently a track field. We saw this the other day. It's got something like eight football pitches in here. One, two three, four, yep, and times two, eight full football pitches inside of this track. It's a big park, you guys. This park looks bigger than my city. Yeah, I know, right? I know. Now, the other thing, and I don't know where it is exactly and how we would spot it, but somewhere along the coast here um, is, uh, these, there's sort of like the, the, the natural sort of pipe organs, or I don't know if they're natural or whatever, but there's, there's a, uh, some sort of setup made with like you know, stone and tubes and piping and holes drilled into stones. Or I don't remember how it's set up, but there's a natural sort of organ that as the waves sort of come in or something like that, it does sort of like organy sounds. I don't know where. That's Cliff House and the Sutra Baths? Is that over here somewhere? Yeah, see, I don't, I don't know that. I don't know all the things about SF. Well, that's interesting um, to be or not to be. Because I'm pretty sure yesterday, when I was buzzing around with Ascension and A Kiss for Luck, we did San Francisco, and then I think we went to Cape Town afterwards. And holy crap, it's gorgeous. It's insanely gorgeous. And now, I don't know much about it, right? So some chat is going to have to fill in the, uh, the details for it, but it's certainly something we could take a look at. Table Mountain, oh, so many things. So beautiful. Is there anything... Okay, let me change the time to uh, tonight. Yep. Yeah, uh, how the lighting changes. Hold on. First. Let's appreciate the, uh, the setting sun behind us. So nice. I think I might have just crashed the game. I think the game might have just crashed. Which is inch? Oh no! There we go. Just hitched for a second. This is to say, because I got very little in the way of crashes and things um, in the preview edition, which is kind of funny here. All right, let's go to full night. You can see, a, you can see planes. Actually, see the sparking lights? That must be um, San Francisco Airport over there, and plane probably coming in. I don't know, coming in, taking off. I'm not sure. We open the uh, the VFR map. We'll actually be able to see uh, 
the uh, the planes on there. Yeah, it must be it must be one of these that I'm spotting. Tons of them flying around. There is live traffic. Oh, that's great. Uh, what? Time, uh, how late are we? Oh, okay, this is only 8:30. So the sun is set, but there's still a lot of light in the sky. Well, not even set all the way over there. Well, I mean the sun has set below the horizon, but there's still plenty of extra light. Let's go uh, right to midnight here. Oh, turn on the lights on my plane. Ah. Does my plane not have lights? Oh, now that is trippy. These are my radios and stuff down here too. Transponder, probably about the crash. This plane doesn't have any lights, you guys. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely... This plane is not allowed to fly at night, I'm sure. Stealth plane. Yeah, just wear a headlamp. Yeah. Anyone playing? Is there any... There is baseball going on right now. How do they figure out the, uh, the baseball for coronavirus thing? Are they all at, like, one stadium? Or are they still moving around? Like, because I, I, the baseball season has restarted. Um, because I know people have been very angry at the Astros. That's about it. I don't I don't tend to watch a lot of baseball. Sometimes I get into it. Gotta follow the Blue Jays, obviously, right? That's the way it goes. Moving around, no fans. Okay. That's sort of like what they're doing with F1. No, the, the lighting model they've used is great in this game. Just, just wonderful. And what's amazing to me is, yeah, being able to um, just switch... You know, that's back to daytime. Or let's let's watch the sunrise. There we go. Sun rising in the east. How insanely beautiful is that? So good. Okay, yeah, we're getting more. La oh, hmm. What I'm gonna do? We're gonna choose. We're gonna go to a different flight. Um, I don't know if why it is doing this. My CPU is not being hammered that hard at all. That's that's not... It's hitching on, on something here. Um, what I might do... Because we're going to change locations. Um, what I might do is still go ahead and... Uh, temporarily, I'll just shut down the stream for a second. And restart OBS in 30 FPS mode. It's the sim. It's a sim, not OBS here. But we weren't having this problem. I've, I have never had this problem in the game. Uh, but it's also the first time we've live streamed, so there might be some sort of weird um, interaction going down. So we're going to take, yeah. Yeah, actually, no, right now my CPU is at 100%. Between Flight Simulator and OBS, it's it's maxing out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the stream for a second. I'm going to restart the stream with OBS running in 30 FPS and hope that that helps a little bit. And uh, we're also going to go to our next location. Um, my next location I was thinking is we would visit the Fjords of Norway. I think I still want to do that. We're going to have to make a decision about our third one. Um, someone bringing up Cape Town again makes me think our third flight might be around Cape Town. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to kill the stream for a minute, just change some settings, come back in, and yet we're going to go to Norway, and we're... Are anyone out there pining for the fjords? Because I know I am. All right, give me, give me one minute. 